Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dr. Heather Denniston, and this is the Junk You Should Know show, where we air every Friday at noon PST with interesting wellness subjects and junk that you should know. And before I welcome our amazing guest, Anissa Woodall, I'm going to just do a quick sponsor. Uh, the Change Cave is the sponsor of the Junk You Should Know show, uh, and the Change Cave is a 12-module online learning institute for women over 40 ready to up their wellness game, and it's got incredible resources and wavering accountability and just a bulletproof group community, private community of women who are all striving toward better wellness. It's a great program. So I'll put the link below if you're interested at all. And don't forget that on the Junk You Should Know show, there's always a link to collect a, f a few free goodies. So make sure you look around either in the description or the comments for that. Without further ado, Anissa Woodall, thank you so much for joining me today. Sure, thank you. Yeah, and we have a little friend with us. Who is that? This is Aiden. <laughs> Hi, Aiden. This is Aiden's video debut. Yes. <laughs> so fun. Stardom. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, so Anissa is going to be talking to us about bone breath, but first I want you to know a little bit more about her. I have followed Anissa for several years. Um, she works with some other practitioners that I'm aware of, but Anissa, I'd like you to tell uh, everybody a little bit about what you do and how you got passionate about sort of natural food, natural living. If anybody has seen your Instagram account, it's hiking and biking and great food and the best was when she was pregnant she had the most awesome like pregnancy biking pregnancy hiking it was amazing so tell me a little bit about your background and what led you to where you are now yeah okay so my background um my parents i can give all the credit to my parents i would say they raised me to have a strong appreciation for nature and for health um, among my friend groups as i was growing up people always thought of me as the weird person who would bring <laughs> that one food to school that nobody ever heard of. And so <laughs> I kind of developed a reputation for being that weird person who always <laughs> recognized foods that nobody else was eating. <laughs> and, right? Except Absolutely. now that everybody, you know, it is kind of a trend right now. Yeah, um, it sure is. And is that so, what is that what got you into becoming an, a um, nutrition certified nutritionist? Yeah. So kind of um you know, having that background, I always had that strong desire to want to help people with foods and to kind of just have that, that <laughs> to, share, to share foods as well with the people I love and people who I know. Um, you know, at the time I had been, you know, I would say for about for about seven years, I had been vegetarian. And, okay. And so, you know, I th because I had a strong love of nature and all of that, I wanted to do what was best for the environment. And at the time, I thought being vegetarian was was what I had to do. Yeah. Um, seven years later, I'm anemic. I'm feeling terrible. I have memory loss and um, extremely exhausted. And so I just um, I kind of decided I was like, you know, I'm studying nutrition. I have to be open minded enough to try and change my diet. Yeah to see if that will, if that's the cause, right? If that's, yeah. what's, you know, my, you know, feeling so terrible. Yeah. I jumped right into it. You know, I started eating all of the iron rich foods, you know, bone mm. marrow and liver mm. and red meat and mm. all of the foods that as a vegetarian, mm. you couldn't imagine happening. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's actually really funny going back to my childhood. My mom used to eat liver all the time Oh. and, and say things, which she's from Iran. She would say things like which means eat the bone, right? I remember watching a video and hearing her say that. And, you know, we had chicken in the meal and she was encouraging us to chew on the bone. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And it's so funny, you know, because because a lot of people are saying, oh, well, bone broth is just a fat or it's just a, you know, a modern trend right now. It's like, well, no, bone broth has actually been, um, <laughs> you want to talk. <laughs> So bone broth is really, you know, it's a cultural food that's been nourishing people for centuries. And, yeah. um, you know, everybody knows that you are what you eat, right? So if yeah. you're going to eat bones, then you're going to have strong bones and also the other tissues that are made from those same minerals. And, and yeah, for sure. And I, a couple things you mentioned that um, that resonate with me. Number one is I was also anemic and sort of a fair weather vegetarian for a long time. And it wasn't until I started reincorporating iron rich foods into my diet, including, um, bone in meats and, uh, some beef for sure. And, um, uh, general proteins like that. And, and that, that 
completely changed it for me. I mean, I was getting iron infusions and all sorts of things and, and that doesn't need to happen anymore. So that was really great. And I think the other piece too that, um, and you may be thinking this already, but um, the, the light bulb that went on for me is when somebody I was hearing lecture talked about the fact that uh, we've cleaned up our meat so much that we've literally stripped them of any of those incredible nutrients that we get from the bones and the bone broth and, and all of that. We just took it out. So we're buying boneless, skinless breasts of chicken that have no fat, no bone on them and no, and no collagen. Exactly. So for sure, we are collagen deficient. And when we're talking bone broth, bone broth and collagen go hand in hand. That's that's a, really what we're talking about. So tell me a little bit about, you know, um, you are a practicing certified nutritionist. You also got your licensed massage therapy uh, as well, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was working as a massage therapist for about three years uh, while I was going through grad school just to okay. kind of pay the bills. And yeah. um, it was a great way to keep my anatomy up to par. And, uh, yeah. and all so I'm not currently practicing in massage, um, yeah. but, you know, really focusing on the nutrition since I had graduated. Yeah, that's great. And I, uh, you and I have swapped uh, patients back and forth and um, people are super happy with your work. It's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the shows because I know you're an expert in your field. And so let's dive right in. Let's talk a little bit about bone broth. Um, we've already talked a little bit about why it is kind of such a fad, but what, what do you think has kind of brought it to the forefront? What's made it popular? What's, why is it suddenly on every shelf and everybody's talking about it? Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things that I think has made it most popular has been so many people are suffering from digestive problems. You know, I would say that's the number one reason. Uh, and unfortunately, conventional routes are not helping them enough that they're seeking out alternative options. Um, yes. And so, you know, when you think about how to heal the gut, we have to think about, okay, well, what makes up the gut, right? The, um, if we think about the epithelial cells of the gut lining, they are made up of primarily collagen. Mm. Uh, and so we need to have the basic foundation um, of certain nutrients in order to build those same tissues, right? And if we're yeah. deficient certain nutrients, then our body has to kind of make some tissues that are less than, right? They have yeah. to use what they have to try and make it up. So um, collagen is a great source of glycine. It's also a great source of uh, proline and hydroxyproline, which are, those are three different amino acids that build up the collagen protein. And collagen is found in foods or in uh, tissues like bones and skin and all the kind of connective tissue, joints, hair, nails, right? So yeah, we're constantly thinking about, okay, when you are what you eat, then are you eating those things? <laughs> yeah. And I think, let me stop you there for a sec. I think a lot of people think of collagen as topically for wrinkles, as for hair, skin, and nails. But uh, that's a bonus side thing, in my opinion. It's what you're referencing is the di digestive health and all the other collagen-containing internal um, processes, yeah. procedures, and organs that uh, it's essential for. So, I mean, nice hair is nice to have, but honestly, it's a lot of that digestion tissue and all of that that I think is so, so beneficial. Continue. It's, it's actually funny that you bring that up because I'll just give a, an example um, of something that I experienced a couple years ago. I had suffered from a really bad knee injury and I was on crutches for about four months. Um, and I was like, okay, I've had some you know, severe cartilage damage. You know, how can I help restore some of that? And I was like, okay, well, you know, let me up the collagen in my diet. And so I did that for four months. And it was funny because I went to go get my hair cut and the hair stylist was, wow, that's the nicest hair I've ever seen. And I was like, because <laughs> when I was vegetarian, I had brittle hair, it was falling out, you know, all of that stuff. I was like, I have nice hair. What are you talking about? Oh my gosh, that's hysterical. And, and they, every time I go back, they're like, wow, you have such beautiful, good quality hair. It's like, oh, <laughs> the side effect of the collagen I've been having, right? Because your body doesn't say, okay, your joints are injured. Let's only put it in the joints, you know? The body Excellent point. have collagen all over the body we're going to use it to rebuild everything. So my yeah. nails were long, my hair was long, my yeah. gut was doing well, all of that. 
And I've, I've also noticed the joint benefits of increasing collagen in my diet for sure. Uh, and having arthritic joints is, uh, it's, it's easy. Normally, you know, when I get out of bed, my feet hurt, my Achilles tendons hurt, lots of things. And if I am consistent with a really nice high dose of the collagen, it really is super, super helpful. Yeah. So let's move on to the bone broth. Um, one thing I want listeners to know is that you have uh, a sort of an, uh, uh, immune boosting recipe that you're going to list in the in the comments below so people make sure you go down there after and check that out um but i one another reason i asked you come on other than you're a total expert is you posted a picture on instagram of your bone broth and it looked like a solid block of like jello so i hadn't seen bone broth look like that before when i've made it for myself there are definitely some fat floaties on the top and it does get a little thicker at, you know, once it comes out of the fridge, but yours is like a solid rock. So please tell me and show me what that's all about. Yeah. So, um, one thing I'll bring up real quick before showing you yes. is that, um, we'll, we will commonly inter use the terms interchangeably of collagen and gelatin. So collagen is actually the protein of, you know, where it comes from, right? It, it helps make up collagen in our body, but when it's, found in a bone broth. Yes. When it's found in a bone broth, it's the collagen is then kind of um, degraded and in, into its individual amino acids and then it creates a gelled product, which is what we call gelatin. Okay, and got so it. When you buy collagen or you buy gelatin, those are gonna behave in two different ways, right? One of them is gonna solidify when it gets cold, the other one is gonna stay fairly liquid, right? And yes. so I'll go I'll go show you just kind of what it looks like. So um, this is an example of what bone broth might look like. You know, you make it, you put it in a jar. Ah, I've stored this in the fridge overnight. Okay. So you'll see that there's a layer on the top there. That's chicken fat, right? So I've made, uh, I've made chicken bone broth. Okay. And, um, that chicken fat, a lot of times people say, oh, ew, let me just scrape this off and throw it away. I think it's a great source of fat and also has all of those fat soluble nutrients that came in through the broth. Yes. And so you want to use that. You can use it to saute vegetables. You can use it for just heating up your soup and having that as a, you know, have some good calories in your soup and all of that. But then you'll notice that I scooped here and I'll show you just what that looks like, right? Yeah. That's solid. It's solid. Yeah. And, so, um, <laughs> and if you look at, if you try and shake it, right, it kind of jiggles. Right? Yeah. That's where it gets the jiggliness from, right? Um, you know, if we think about Jello, right, that's a, a brand name product. They use gelatin, um, yes. a good quality source of gelatin, and they also use other poor quality products. So, but this is a totally different type of gelatin. If we use good quality, grass fed, you know, all of that antibiotic free gelatin, then you can make. Uh, you can totally make a ton of different kinds of, um, you know, snacks. You know, I like to mix it with, maybe not with this one, but if I use the actual gelatin powder, yeah. you know, coconut milk snacks or, you know, even coffee snacks or things like that, where it's a, it's a nice way to get in your collagen in your diet, Yeah, uh, you know, but it's not getting with all the sugar. Yeah. And I've made like taken frozen raspberries and gelatin and made like little gummy bears and things like that. And it's of course not going to taste like high fructose corn syrup, which takes a little getting used to, but once you do get used to them, I mean, they're delicious and they're mobile and they're great. So I like that you mentioned that I, I would have forgotten to, to um, discuss that, but there's a lot of different ways of getting that collagen into your diet and uh, gelatin rather. And, um, and so I think that's really great. And thank you for, I, I clearly, as evidenced by earlier conversation, mix, I, I don't mix the two up, but I often use the two loosely interchangeably. Yeah, and it's, it's, a good, well. it's a good point to kind of explain to people, people that yes, but they actually are different. So um, that's good. Now we've talked about health benefits. Tell us a little bit about your recipe that you've perfected, how do you do it? Um, and because people are like, ah, oh, it takes forever. So um, I don't mind that. Like, I don't care if my, once it's done, once it's cooking, it's like, you just have to look at it periodically. But tell me about your recipe. Yeah. So number one, I like making bone broth because it's a warming food. You know, right now in the, we're, you know, in the beginning of fall with this transition and I'm just, every day I'm making broth rich foods. Um, and so I make lots of different kinds of broths. Um, 
And another reason why I like making broth is because it, it significantly re reduces food waste, right? Mm. If, you know, I, I imagine a lot of your listeners are also, you know, people who care about our environment, who care about their health as well. And so if we're trying to minimize food waste, then this is a really great way to use the whole animal and yeah. also to use up veggie scraps, right? Yes. So one of the ways that I like making my bone broth is, um, number one, I'll save veggie scraps from, you know, when I'm doing things around the kitchen, right? Onion skins or ends, carrot tops, parsnip ends, leek tops, um, mushroom stems, you know, anything that you're going to throw away anyway, unless, yes. you, unless you have chickens or a compost, you're likely not going to be benefiting from the nutrients that are in those foods. And so I like to stick those in a bag, put them in the freezer so that the next time I'm making broth, I pull that out and then I just dump it right into the pot. Brilliant. And so, <laughs> and so I will, um, you can also use celery ends for that. So, but when I'm making my chicken broth, the, the way that I love doing it the most is, um, you know, I will buy a whole chicken and I like to do mine in the slow cooker. Uh, some people prefer an instant pot. Some people prefer a Dutch oven. You can really use whichever one you prefer. Um, but I personally love that smell of warm chicken broth, you know, waking me up in the morning, right? Yeah. It's, I wake up and I was like, ooh, I want some of that, right? Yeah. Like I had some pho broth going and uh, it was, I made it with bone marrow and oxtail and that's what my kid had for breakfast this morning, right? So if you're a working mom, it's a great way to reduce the amount of work you have to do to feed your family as well. That's brilliant. And that's so, uh, but, so when I make my chick, when I make my chicken broth, I use a whole chicken and then once I'm done cooking it up, I take the meat off. You can save some of that meat for salad, or you can just save it for a soup. Um, and then I leave the I leave the bones in the in the pot itself. It's okay. I mean, it's kind of a great option if you're lazy, right? You don't yeah. really want to see yourself in the moment, and so you just leave the bones in the pot. Add a couple tablespoons of apple mm -hmm. cider vinegar. Add your veggie scraps if you want them. You don't have to. Um, and then just use you know fill up water to fill the pot. Um, and then you just kind of put that on low for about 24 to 24 to 36 hours, I would say. Yeah. Um, you don't want to let it go too long because then those precious fats get oxidized, right? If you ever let it go too long, it can kind of start smelling rancid. And then that's when you know it's, it's too long, right? So I usually like to go at least, you know, at least 24 hours, not more than 48 yeah, that's that's actually also something I did not know. So that's that's helpful to to know that for sure. And do you um, because one of the recipes I have, I bring it to a boil on the stovetop and then just reduce it to a simmer, and that's where it stays for the you know the twenty four hours. So um, in a slow cooker, of course, you're not bringing it to a boil first. You're just turning it on. Is that right, correct? Yeah, that's what I do. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. Um, oh no, it's it's great from it. Um, and so, but what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll add like boiling water or I'll add, you know, warm water at least. So yes. it doesn't sitting in the pot for a long period of time at a cold temperature. Yeah, that's great. It's funny. I'm doing this with you, don't, rocking oh. into sleep. <laughs> that, that is so funny. Uh, okay. I, can I just say I've learned so much already. So this is fantastic. This show can basically just be for my information. <laughs> Um, okay, so we talked uh, benefits and just basic recipe, and then you let it cool completely, put it in mason jars. Yeah, so I let it cool. Um, you're probably wondering, okay, do I keep the bones? Do I not keep the bones? Right, what do I do? So I typically will strain it out. Um, okay. And I, I have a mason jar funnel that makes life a lot easier for oh, someone. Oh, there is such a thing? Yeah, they use it for canning. Oh my gosh, I'm getting myself one of those. Yeah. That's awesome. That's why I got it in the first place. Yeah. That's that's great. So you use a mason jar funnel, fill your mason jars, couple in the fridge, rest in the freezer. Is that? Yeah. Well, in my house, it doesn't usually last very long. So okay. I usually keep them all in the fridge because I, I usually make broth at least once a week uh, as we get into the colder months, uh, if not more. And so uh, like right now I've got pho, pho broth going. I last night I made like a braised chicken thighs and that had broth in it. Um, earlier I had made um, my, a couple days ago I'd made some, um, you're going to call me crazy, but let's, but hear me out. Okay. <laughs> some chicken foot broth. Okay. Um, 
<laughs> and so um, some people might be wondering, you know, how can they get more collagen in their broth, right? A lot of times you might be, you might be making broth with um, something like just, just beef bones, right? Well, beef bones, they have some collagen in them, but not a whole lot. Okay. Um, you know, the more joints you have in your bones, the more collagen you're going to have in your broth. Okay. And, uh, think about, okay, well, collagen makes up skin, hair, and nails. Well, chicken feet is mostly skin and nails and joints, right? So it's yes. Um, and so, again, traditional cultures use chicken feet all the time. That's, yes. Right? And so um, that's, I mean, people would have that. I remember my parents used to live in China, and I would be there visiting them, and people would be snacking on fried chicken feet. That's I didn't love but it was it was because of the friedness it wasn't because of the chicken feet. yeah yeah no that is that is so great i hadn't thought of that either and it's and i mean it's it sounds like such a that's a great idea and an easy thing to get a hold of and uh i think that's excellent really really good idea a question about the gelatin because people are going to be like i don't have to eat it like a like that thick thing of jello so i'm assuming once you heat that up it's just kind of like it's just broth it's liquid, yeah. And yeah. so the nice part is that it's a really like viscous liquid, right? It's you can tell that it's thick with protein, yeah, uh, because it's not going to be just watery, yeah. Uh, but I love that, you know, when I'm having a soup and it just it has that nourishing flavor. It's got that thickness to it. You know, yes. it's not gonna be, it's not going to be gelatinous at all. And can somebody, if that kind of like grosses them out a little bit, can can we, as we're heating it up, just add some water and thin it out a little bit if we wanted to? Does that work? Okay. Yeah. Just cause I know like I, I'm middle, like I like either really, really brothy or a little bit more viscous. I don't like super viscous. So I'll just sometimes add a little bit of water in there or uh, whatever, just to loosen it up a bit. But um, I think that's, that is great. Now, what else haven't I asked you that you think viewers should probably be yeah. aware of? One thing that I'll just mention um, is that a lot of times people kind of get grossed out by you know, the idea of bone broth, um, you know, they say, Oh, I can't, I can't eat that. It came from an animal or <laughs> they know it came from an animal, but I'm going to see that it came from an animal, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, which, um, I'm, that's something I'm very passionate about and I, I won't really talk a whole lot about it, but I do feel like we need mm. to have an appreciation and, and for, appreciation for, and to value the life that gives yes. us life, right. Yeah. Um, and, there's personally, I don't think that we can be healthy um, for a long period of time without getting high nutrient foods yeah. and animals provide high nutrients. And so, yeah. um, you know, it took me a long time to come to that, uh, <laughs> to come to that conclusion. Unfortunately, it was through my own health journey. Yeah. Um, you know, but I would say when people get grossed out by seeing things like that, I would just, you know, encourage them to kind of just start small, right? they can first off start by buying bone broth in the store, right? Yes. Just taste it. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. And then you can move a little bit further from there, right? Okay. Maybe watch somebody make it, right? You don't yeah. even have to touch it yourself. Yeah. And, and then maybe, okay, you get a little bit more comfortable with that. And then maybe buy the bones and then have somebody else, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think too, you bring up a good point. I know what my first foray was to buy the Pacific brand organic, and people, organic is your only option. We haven't even mentioned that. And, um, you know, you have to think about the fact that if you are not using organic bones and buying organic, then those bones have absorbed all the drugs, all the poor quality food, all the antibiotics, all of that stuff. So you're basically boiling that all out and, and then ingesting it. So please, please be aware of that. The other thing yeah. is I, the first one I bought was the lemongrass brand of Pacific and it was caca. I did not like it at all. It tasted terrible. So then somebody might go, Oh, well then that's bone broth. It's not, uh, the rosemary, um, rosemary brand of the Pacific brand is was delicious. And some tips, if you are buying a brand of bone broth and you taste it and you're like, oh, that doesn't, you know, tickle my yeah. fancy. Um, salt, pepper, a clove of garlic. Um, you can even use some essential oils in there like um, oregano oil or whatever, or just load it up with some spices. I've done that. Tons of squeeze a clove of garlic, you know, heat it up in the pot and it just transforms it. So you can play with it. If you get one home from the store and you're not liking it, then then 
play with it a little bit. And, yeah. um, you know, like you were saying, there's you make all different kinds and they probably all taste very different. And so right. you, you find one that's going to work for you. Yeah. And so some of the different ways I like to flavor my broths um, would be, I mean, if I was doing with an essential oil, I would use like one drop because yes. you're very for strong. Them. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, but I really like using um, Nom Nom Paleo has a spice mix. It's called Magic Mushroom Powder. Oh. Um, it's a mushroom with a couple like chili pepper and thyme and salt. Um, but that's a really nice way to flavor broth. Um, she has yes. a deep spice version of it on her website but you can also buy it at Whole Foods uh, pre-made and then um, so that's one way I like to do it um, you know the fud broth that I made has uh, coriander and fennel and star anise and ginger and it's just a lot of warming spices um, I like also just using um, oregano you yeah know, me too you know something that grows prol prolifically in my garden and so I just yes. try it and have it for all my broth and stuff like that so yeah. That's that's great. I use I tend to use a ton of garlic, and then at our place in Scottsdale, for some reason, the woman that owned the house before decided to plant sixteen count them sixteen rosemary bushes. And if you know anything about Arizona, rosemary is a weed; it goes like grows like crazy. So I will take sprigs of that, clean it up really nice, and throw it in there, and it's just delicious. So uh, there's there's lots of options, and I I love that you mentioned pho, pho because that's something people might not have thought of as far as um, an option for their broth as well. So that was good. Yeah. So when a lot of times when we recommend making bone broth, you know, you don't, you don't have to sip it on its own. I do love, I mean, like I brought mine yes. here, right. I have it in my little travel mug that I just drink. Um, and so I, um, I will keep my broth in there, but you yeah. don't have to do it. You can have it as a soup. You can make a stew. You can do braised meat. Yes you know, have it in whatever, whatever way you enjoy it. Right. But yeah, totally agree. And I love that you mentioned the sip sippy thing. Cause if any of you are trying to kind of like downplay your caffeine thing, having some bone broth in a coffee mug is so delicious. And then you're sipping it all day. It's affecting your digestion all day. And, uh, it, it li literally, and I don't know about for you, Anissa, but uh, when I am, when my tummy's a little bit upset uh, or it's just, I can tell my digestion is off like one little cup of it makes me feel different. And um, it's amazing how quickly it seems to just calm and soothe. And it's, it's wonderful. So yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. It's, it's like a warm hug. I mean, it, it is, it totally is. Bone broth is a warm hug for sure. Right around it. And it's just, it's so nice to have, um, yeah. especially as it's, as it's cold. Um, yeah. And so, I love One, it. I, I would mention that if, if somebody for some reason doesn't like the taste of broth, yeah, you know, crazy, but um, you know, right, I really like. Yeah, why? Uh, there's bona fide provisions makes a uh, pureed, almost like a smoothie kind of thing, but it's like gazpacho, right? They make like a, um, I forget the name of it, but it tastes like gazpacho. Okay. Uh, so they make like a veggie drink kind of thing um that tastes really good like they have okay. one with peas and spinach and they have you know the the gazpacho one i think has beets in it as well yeah. um it you're gonna think i'm crazy if i call it a bone broth smoothie but you know think of it as like a cold soup um yeah. it tastes so good well, and, and that leads us into because uh, Dr. Josh Axe uh, uh, has ancient nutrition and then Vital Proteins has uh, both a beef gelatin and a collagen protein right. in their collagen peptides. And Josh Axe's stuff, his ancient nutrition is all over Whole Foods. I think there's like nine different flavors of his bone broth powder. Um, and so is it better to maybe like, of course, gold standard would be making your own, but if you want to use it in a smoothie, I mean, he's got chocolate flavored bone broth and it sounds disgusting, but bone broth can be almost tasteless. And, uh, and so, you know, they've added some natural flavorings to it. And, and so there's, there's options, people, there's options. So like Anissa was saying, if you hate the flavor of it, you've got a couple different ways you can go and still get the benefit of it. Yeah. And so one thing I'll just mention on that is that um, when you do make it at home, you do get the good quality fats that come out with, you know, in yes. the bone smoothing process. A lot of times the bone broth protein that you buy is just the protein, which has the collagen in it. So that's still a great yes. option. 
um, just know that you're not getting, um, you know, the whole, the whole meal. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's great. Good information. People need to know exactly kind of what they're getting and what they're not getting. So that's yeah. really good. Yeah. And then, um, I've only tried the vanilla one of, of Josh Axe's, um, bone broths mm. and it mm. tastes, you know, just like a regular kind of vanilla flavored protein powder. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, mm. you know, with the vital proteins, mm. their bone broth protein, um, that one actually tastes like bone broth. And so yes. it's hydrated bone broth essentially, and which I love. Like I'll have a couple of tablespoons of that. I'll add some sea salt, some thyme, and it just, I nice. love it right before bed and it really helps with sleep. Um, and so those are just a couple different options, but having something like collagen protein can also, you know, just unflavored mm. collagen peptides can also be yes. another way to get more collagen in the diet. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, in terms of like best good, also good, you know, like yeah. the level of what I would, how I would say it. But, you know, I'm always, I'm always one to say, okay, use the whole food, use your food waste, you know, all of that stuff. And then exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that was, that's a great point to have made is just, you know, what a great way to use up stuff. You're going to just probably throw it anyway, unless you compost. Um, so that's, that's awesome. Well, Anissa, thank you so much for joining us. This was so packed with great information. Uh, this is, I definitely will put some of the shows I put on um, continuous rotation so people can see them. They're on our YouTube channel on well fit and fed and, uh, and on Facebook. So thank you so much. This was just great. People are going to get a lot of their questions answered. And um, I love that you were able to join us today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. There's there's so much more I love and can talk about. So great. I I love sharing some of those things, but you know, I have recipes on my website and things I also share on my email list. So for those of you who might be interested in in yes. getting, you know, more recipes like last night I just um or last night, no, yesterday, I just shared my chicken turmeric chicken soup recipe with my email list. And so That's great. That, yeah, love, guys, what's what's the website they should go to? Oh, so my website, it's pretty easy. It's anisawoodall.com. Okay, um, great. And we're going to list uh, the, the general website where you can sign up for emails. We're going to list the link to the immune boosting bone broth re recipe. And you can reach out to Anissa. She's got a great Instagram account. She's got, uh, she's on Facebook. So please definitely check her out because she's a wealth of information. And I'm sure she'd be happy to connect with you and chat with you about your questions from today and from other nutrition type subjects of which she's very well versed and uh and that's great and i'm sure we'll have you back on the show because uh this has just been fantastic so thank you so much yeah thank you <laughs> okay great all right well everyone we're going to sign off enjoy the rest of your friday enjoy your weekend we'll see you back here next friday at noon pst and be sure to go to youtube again because all the old shows are on there you can get all sorts of different subjects um but we'll look forward to seeing you live next week as well all right we're signing off and we'll see you soon yeah.